very pleased to welcome um, Paddy Stafford. How are you, mate? All right, thank you, Scott. Good to see you as always. For the benefit of people that don't know who Paddy, the, the small amount of people in the whole world that don't know who Paddy Stafford is, <laughs> um, you're obviously you play the character Jasper in the fantastically successful, almost immediately uh, kiddo. Oh yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, you play a, a very significant role in the film, and I'm very pleased you did because I think you did an epic job of it, mate. <laughs> oh, I was very honoured too. Very honoured too. Yeah, yeah. Well, so you should be. It's it's oh, a yeah, great honour. Yeah. This is going to be such a success, and it's going to be a massive feature, and it'll be, you know, um, a massive franchise to educate people about the. Uh, uh-huh. I'll put my mortgage on this, mate. So, <laughs> but, but I hope it's a small mortgage. It's a, it's a caravan. You bought a caravan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just it's more of a shed, to be honest, with wheels. But um, for the benefit of people that um don't know who you are, can you just give me just a little bit of a a potted history of Paddy Stafford and how you've got to get to this this point? Uh, yeah. Yeah, do you want my criminal history as well as... Yeah, yeah, all in. No, so... <laughs> uh, no I'm Paddy. Um, I, um, I'm originally from Derby, which is just around the corner from where uh, Scott's from. Yeah. Um, we found that out on set, which is quite... Brought us really close together, I think. We did it. We bonded uh, after that, didn't we? Absolutely. Midland Massive. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm an actor. Um, I suppose I'm a professional one. Uh, but I just have loads of fun with it, really. I, I when I get to do it, um, it's great. Um, and singer. It, yeah, well, yeah. When I'm when I'm not, uh, well, either if I am inebriated or I've stopped <laughs> getting inebriated. Yeah, I suppose I do sing now and again. Um. Uh, yeah, I, I might branch out to dancing soon. I think again, if I get drunk enough i'll probably start dancing i know um <laughs> well didn't you say that no, I, football, you can dance sing horse ride archery oh yeah you, you name it i can do it <laughs> yeah just give me two weeks two weeks is probably enough time and i reckon i can <laughs> learn to do whatever you need me to do um but yeah I, that's it i went to the manchester school of theater um and i graduated in the middle of the pandemic uh, right. i didn't know that yeah how yeah. was that? And then it was just after that I met Brett. How, how do you how do you do something that's so human human contact required? You don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or you just stopped. We just stopped. We just ended. Um, but um, very luckily after that after we were like sort of allowed to go out and go to the shops and not queue up. Yeah. Things I got to uh, link up with Brett. Um and that yeah that was my first thing that I kind of did in person after the pandemic. So, so had you um, done something with Brett before? I don't, I know I should know this, but what had you what, yeah. what had you done? Yeah, it was um it was a project. Um, it was a true story about it was kind of for the benefit of educating young people about the hazards of cybercrime and things like that. Um. And we just, it, it was meant to be really like formal and things, but um, me and Brett kind of, I don't know, I suppose we just took <laughs> on a different journey and <laughs> made it a kind of an indie film. And it was dead, it was dead fun. It was really fun. Um, but it was in the middle of summer and it was very, very warm. Um, but that was the first time I met Brett and I thought, this guy knows what he's doing. I'm going to try and stay in his. Well, I think Shut I think up. to give credit credit to Brett for um, everyone really. I think except for Lauren because I think Lauren um, was was cherry picked by Lewis. Yes, really fortuitously <laughs> right at the eleventh hour of of shooting. But I think certainly Toby and um, Lisa, um, Toby being um, Bev and Lisa being kiddo, um, was was all down to Brett. So he's obviously got a very good. Oh, and he, I mean, he did a smashing job. Uh, yeah, everyone wasn't really brilliant, but also sound, which mm. uh, always helps. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, he's not bad at his job, Brett. He's not bad at his job. He's all right, isn't he? He's not too shabby. He's, he's. Uh, yeah. I think, I think personally, from my point of view, I've been, I've been very lucky in, in um, everybody that's been involved and how, 
how it all connected so kind of quickly really but just um from the when you obviously Brett had that conversation with you when when he originally talked to you had he was the script intact I mean I guess it must have been because before they'd contacted people yeah so I got a script through and I remember I remember reading it I, I remember first thinking oh it's Brett for a start all right cool then I've I, he, he, I can't remember quite the description of uh what is said next to it but it was that it's and this might be made up for me thinking after I read it that it was quite like avant-garde or or like you know there was a me- big there was meta there was a bigger message within it yeah so I sat down I read it and uh I just thought it was wicked mm-hmm. I saw it I saw it all and like I mean, the character of Jasper, I felt very lucky to be even reading for him, mm-hmm. um, like have the chance to audition. Because, um, he, he, you know, his story is so rich and, like, the, you know, the the history of his connection with Kiddo, um, growing up together and, you know, I mean, these are things that we kind of, I suppose, sort of decided later. I didn't mm-hmm. really understand that originally or, like, but not understand it, but it didn't come to my mind. Mm. Um, it was more the idea of probably the expectations of your father or Jasper's father, you know, and and like picking up the mantle, passing of the torch, sort of thing. Even when you don't, you know, you might not want to do it. I um, see. Yeah. But yeah, when I first read the script, I was I just thought, yeah, this is wicked. I hope you let and me do you, it. <laughs> could you relate to? Um... Because the, the, there's two aspects to you, really. There's your relationship with your father, um, and then there's the relationship with um, a, an animal having, you know, love for a, a pet, if you like. Um, I mean, did you did you drill into that y- yourself from a personal perspective? Um, yeah, you know, I'm like, I'm the oldest brother. I never, my mum never let me have any pets, ever. The closest I ever got was a jar of frog spawn. Closest oh. I ever got was a jar of frog spawn. Um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, I, 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 however, I mean, I've, I've, I've worked with animals and I've been around animals. My cousins all had dogs, and uh, I suppose they've domesticated animals like seen as pets. Mm. But I've I, I, over the years, I've made friends with a lot of people who, and especially at the drama school, I met a lot of people who were. Who were vegan, right? Who were vegetarian, and um, it it completely shifted my perception as well. Growing up, and I think, like, as you get older, you exposed to more things anyway. But mm-hmm. seeing, you know, the way that you treat others, you always try to treat others with respect. Yeah, why would you not do it for all living creatures? I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it did. It, it 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 definitely strikes through, and you know, it, when 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 an animal becomes a member of your family, because that can happen with humans as well. Mm. You know, you don't have always have your blood family. You have family that you know you you you, you, you chosen family. Um, yeah. You know, your friends from your family. Definitely. And, and that's the I suppose the yeah the interesting bit is when a stranger becomes a someone you really care for, like mm. in any relationship. Mm. And that can happen with any living being, I believe. Mm. Um, and it was clear in the script and Jasper's perspective that Kiddo is different. Mm. He says, you know, we had that in, in well, you know, happens in the film where we, you know, we think he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to do it. Always very conflicted, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we've probably all been there as well, um, having to make decisions, but for, you know, having decisions made for us that we don't particularly buy into, but we go with yeah. it. You love your family and you, you kind of respect their wishes really. Yeah. Uh, I definitely felt that in, in your, um, the way you conveyed yourself for sure. Um, and there was, you managed, the thing that I thought was really interesting with you is cause you, you, you got, I mean, looking at you now, you don't look menacing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you are able to kind of switch from just being, a, 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 an approachable person to quite a quite a sinister person with a with a look really which 
because you you when at the start of the film you 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 seem to you've obviously got things on your mind but your your concern for her well-being and you're kind of reassuring and it's like don't worry I'll talk to Dan everything's cool um even down to when you actually get you know when the bus and and the journey ends um it's like don't worry I'll sort it and then there's that I think it's brilliant what they do where you're you see from kiddo's perspective through the bus to your conversation with Bev and you're just standing there like okay well you know that's what that's what we're doing then is it really um but I, I think you did that incredibly well I mean we thought well and Brett knew obviously because he knew you but I know when we looked at the um the, the the variety of people to choose from, everyone, yeah, he's and I know I've said this to you before, so sorry if I'm repeating myself, but everyone, yeah, definitely. Um he he's he's the he's the guy, he's the he's the farmer's son, you know. Um but yeah, no, I think I think what you what you conveyed well, was incredible. It's all them years is that Irish heritage, all oh, my grandfather's <laughs> all farmers and it, was, it all boiled down to this very moment. <laughs> I mean you you've alluded before we started recording that you you are fr you do have irish heritage did you say on the yeah. west coast yeah my granny uh, my, well, my mum's side is from county mayo on the west coast okay yeah i know where that is yeah and and yeah. on a serious note have you got some farming family background as well yeah yeah my like oh, my my well my <laughs> there's a picture on the wall at home of my granddad plowing the fields in ireland and uh, back in the day, I'm named after him. So I know, oh, wow. him, but I'm named after him. Jeez, um, amazing! What what and, uh, coincidence? And and you said you go. also, I started recording that when I said how many views that Alter had had. You said that's most of my family. I mean, did they? <laughs> did they? Um, I mean, was there any like ah, uh, you can't be doing films like that, you know? Like because there's, <laughs> there's a, I know it's a bad accent, sorry, but I they you know they there is a one of the some of the comments that we had on Alter was like, less than I thought there would be of you can't be saying things about farmers you know you can't be you're, you're making the well, one of them particularly was you make farmers look evil um and uh and I I don't really I read it and I thought yeah we do really but I, do, I didn't know really at the time how we could make farmers look great at the same time as obviously alluding to the subject matter that we were dealing with. Um, certainly, I think you, although you do turn, um, you you certainly at the beginning show the potential to be empathetic and kind. Um, yeah. Not really bought into this the thing. But did you did you get any feedback from your Irish family about the subject matter of the film? Uh, I mean, my granny's favourite phrase is, it all, it's, you know, they're only playing pretend. You know, there's a is and all the blood. It's all ketchup. It's all ketchup, right? Um, so they, it's man, all it's, ketchup. It's all ketchup. It's all ketchup. All ketchup. the blood's all ketchup. Yeah. Oh, oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Probably trying to just tell us all this, all pretend. But no, they they enjoyed it. And um, talking about the farmers thing, though, like perspective wise, it it brings to my mind the fact that look, I watched Sean the Sheep as a kid, and the farmer was always bad in that. So, like, it's just it's what it is, isn't it? Um, I and, think so. I yeah. think I think there are certainly farmers out there that are livestock farmers that, if only they could get out of what they're doing and do something that doesn't involve killing animals, they'd probably choose it. But I think, and that's what we're trying to allude to in the Oops. film is that um, drop just gen <laughs> generations it is difficult to kind of uncouple from a generational thing, you know, and if there's, if there's a huge different. amount of land and a, and a farmhouse and, a, and an infrastructure in place that you're into, you can't just go, Oh, I'm going to be a deep sea diver now or, a, or a, what, or a, a whatever you can't, it, I'm sure it's very difficult to, to do that. It's just like acting. Like, I mean, there's a lot of talk about nepotism and acting and things like that. And any business, it's all the same, any industry. You know, you want to change your career. Usually, you go and work with your. Well, I don't know, if, but in my head, usually you go and work with your dad. You do your work experience or something. Yeah. Um. um my dad didn't let me do that. He said, "No way, you're coming to work with me." <laughs> 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 no, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> but um, like that's the kind of 
you know, when it's passed down for generations, especially I think when you have farmland and things like that, it's completely understandable. And then, f- therefore, I can imagine, and I say this because I was, you know, I, I, I was playing Jasper and I was thinking about the legacy. When you pass down that farmland and the farm and the traditions and the heritage, now this is how we do it. Um, I can imagine it'd be hard to let that go. Yeah. But then again, you know, if you keep going the same way that we are, I think as the film alludes to, it's not going to end well. No, uh, no, anyway. it's not. It's definitely not. Well, I, we can all say with confidence, definite and, and not know 100% if you're being brutally honest. But I, I'm, I've got a very strong suspicion based on the research I've done over the last year that it's not sustainable. My big problem is even if the UK sorts itself out, it doesn't mean that the rest of the world will. So what does that mean? And I I feel like we're heading towards a brick wall. It's just how fast we hit it, to be honest. Um, and that that's that's pretty that that makes the hairs on the back of my and I'm 50 now, so I've got quite a few. <laughs> they, <laughs> they're, they're starting to stick up a bit, really, because it's like, well, so what does that mean exactly? Um yeah. and somebody said to me, uh well, you know, at the end of the day, we're in the right, we're on the right side of the world. And it, it's actually the, the folks in the center that are going to get really hit hard because that's where it's going to be the hottest. Um, it doesn't make uh, any better, does it? No. Uh, and, the, and the point about the UK is if the UK sorts itself out, and but the UK is, if it does sort itself out, it always, it always seems to run off and leave everyone else behind anyway. And it's such a so, small country. I mean, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a it's you could fit England into Texas, so we're we're yeah. you know, for all of our high and mightiness. It, uh, maybe we're impactful on the on the on the financial stage in a small way, but but yeah, if we all we, if we all stop eating meat and start recycling, I I don't like to be a negative person, but I don't think that'll make an iota of difference when you look at the rest of the world. No, but but what can we do about that? I mean, that is the thing about film, though, is that. You know, it's not just everybody in the UK that's going to be watching the film. Alter is a USA-based uh, horror channel, so hopefully the visibility over there, you know, it will will help. And and we're all, you know, folks like myself and and you being involved in this project, we're all making a not a collective noise. So hopefully that will make some yeah. some difference for sure. But um, that's I can't believe that you're called Paddy after your Irish farmer. You say granddad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. wild. That is that is yeah. wild. I mean, Paddy's a bit of a giveaway, I suppose. There we go. Just, like... <laughs> <laughs> um, just just going back to the the film a little bit. I mean, how did you find the the process of acting with that crew and being that character through the film? Can you give me a bit of a? How did you feel about all of that? I, I mean, I, I loved every second. I think I said it a hundred times about how like. Brilliant. The crew, the cast, everyone was how easy everyone was to get on with. Um, mm. Because that's not always the case, mm. um, uh, unfortunately. But when it is easy, when everyone does get on and, and people are there to, you know, get the work done, but not, you know, be so serious that you can't just have a good time. Um, you know, it, it, it makes it all a lot easier and mm. a lot more enjoyable. And it makes the story better as well. And the end product, I think, and it, I think it shows that in the film that we, you know, we managed to produce something that not only, you know, tells the story in a compelling way, but um, does it with a certain air of finesse because we knew what we we knew what, that we were doing something that was impactful and we could work with each other in and 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 take chances and offer choices. You know, there was no there was no point where I felt I was going to get told off for. Mm. you know bringing something to the table so it was a it was a brilliant collaborative experience to be honest one of the things that Jordan said to me which is very complimentary uh, about you was how you knew how to work with light and um, he said 
I mean, I only likened it to I think Tom Cruise or somebody, but you just knew how to. <laughs> I don't think you were to Tom Cruise. I mean, which is fine. <laughs> I think he was. There was. He said he he alluded to one particular scene at the end when you're in the farmhouse. Oh no, it was at the beginning actually. The big the first scene in the farmhouse where you lean forward and you say, "Why don't you come in you know, the room with us?" And you step and you stepped into the light. I mean, is is that something that you've been taught to be? Sorry if I'm asking stupid actory questions because I don't know. But was is that something that was kind of uh, conveyed? Uh, I, I I mean, I've done it in my training. We worked a lot in theatre, um, right. but I could say yeah, it was a it was an artistic choice. <laughs> Most of the time, it's the look of the draw. So it goes. <laughs> um, you just gotta try and re- you just try and remember the lines and not fall over most of the time. To be honest, that's what I do. But, um, well, fortunately, no, I, I, there, weren't, there weren't that many, were there? That was that was the good thing about the film. Uh, <laughs> well, so you just have to do a lot of lot of thinking, <laughs> a lot of thinking pieces, a lot of um, acting. Um, but no, I mean, speaking of the lighting, do you know what I mean? It's well, it's easy to look good in a well lit space, and mm. uh, like it was it was well lit. Um, and it, you know, in in that farmhouse, we're very lucky to be in there. You know, I remember yeah, yeah. when we went in, and we were like, "This is it. This is perfect." Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was crazy, wasn't it? Um, I, I, yeah, the atmosphere in there was brilliant. And then when we did get the lights in, I remember seeing the haze through the window. Yeah, yeah. and it comes in in one of the last shots. Um, yeah, it was gorgeous. So, was. Yeah, thanks, Jordan. But at the same yeah. time, I mean, it's not hard <laughs> to, to to look nice and. In a well lit space, to be honest, or <laughs> just stand in the light, easy. You you were the uh, the only person of 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 the whole cast that seemed to be harder on yourself about. Not that they weren't taking it as seriously as you, but I know when I took you back to the train station on the last day of the shoot, um, and you said, "Oh, there, there was things I would have liked to have done differently," and and you were you were quite hard on yourself, really. I mean. Were there any, after seeing the film, because obviously you did multiple takes, after seeing the film, are there things there that you're like, like really happy with as well as maybe self-critical about? Um, yeah, I mean, look, the, it, it tells a story and that's the main thing. I, like I say, I I was, I'm, I'm, I think I'm very experienced in theatre, well, very experienced, I'm about. I've done more of it than our film and TV. Yeah. Um, and the great thing about theatre is you do it, it's gone. I'm never going to see it. They clap, I bow. <laughs> with, it. with a film or a TV, you do it, you're like, oh, my God. There's loads of people there watching you. Mm. Maybe, hopefully, sometimes they come up to you and go, well done, well done. You can. They're just saying that anyway. And then uh, you go home and you wait a couple of months, or in the case of Brett, a couple of days, and the <laughs> film's ready. <laughs> and... Uh, then you watch it and usually with a load of other people and you, uh, yeah. Well, the first time, you saw, the first time you saw it, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but the first time you saw it was when we were in London, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. That it was. was with your friends as well. Actor yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah. So, yeah, some actor friends and some non-actor friends and I, I thought I'd bring them along and uh, kind of bring them to the premiere, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah, they loved it, you know, that, they loved it and they would they would tell me if they didn't like it um mm. which is why i need them there to be honest yeah yeah but, um, that's, what, that's what good friends are for yeah and i uh, like yeah it, it but it could always be better basically it's just what i was thinking there's, there's always more to do you know if it was if it was over then you'd just do one and quit wouldn't you I suppose yeah yeah i mean i i, I don't know whether i'm getting less critical about the work that i'm either the deal or are involved in but I I did feel like when I, after I saw the 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 first cut actually everything looked just so beautiful um, and I I knew it would because I'd seen Jordan's work before anyway um, but yeah I I couldn't I couldn't see where anything could kind of be improved anywhere really I thought you're all your all your acting yourself Toby and Lisa and Lauren and and the, the supporting casting it was just I, th- I think that the relationships that everybody managed to manifest so rapidly in those four days really really transposed onto the screen um, and I think that's 
that's credit to everybody involved really and i'm not i'm not just talking you know about how great the film is in every interview i do i genuinely i genuinely when i when i think about my initial responses of it they were just of absolute pride and and, and awe about what they can do in such a blooming short space of time i mean we're talking yeah four absolutely <laughs> and like you say i mean like the, the relationships as i said before that came down to the fact that and it is like it goes through the whole creative team where you know the casting of it then getting the people together but it does come down to getting the right people in and then everybody being sound, as I say, and mm. that allows you all to get on and create them bonds and and uh, just, you know, do your job to the to the best ability you can. And um, you and you and saw uh, Lisa as a pet, right? From for through the whole thing. You you were able to see what she was in as characters and also this lovely person that also was was Lisa. And the, and the same with Toby as as your dad as well. I mean, what's that like to have a dad for four days, artificially? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like great. I I, I love it because it's. I think whenever you play a character, there's always a slice of you in it because there has to be. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Or or you you take all your experiences as you say and you make them up in a big pot and go right, okay, what can I use? Um. But no, it was great. It was it was great. Toby said a funny thing. I must have got my mum's jeans for the height. Uh, he was <laughs> I think we managed to trick that on the camera a bit. I'm proper short. Yeah, because you were about the same sort of <laughs> uh, height as Julia, weren't you? Yeah. So that, that yeah. Does, that's, yeah. And I think Toby does give off very strong, affable dad vibes as well, doesn't he? Um, yeah, absolutely. And, I, I can't remember the name of the guy that owned the house now. I feel really bad, but um, oh he yes, Ross is quite a gnarly, not grumpy, but very serious. He he came across as a really good granddad as well. That kind of oh, like... oh a wizard, absolute wizard. Yeah, he could, I reckon he, <laughs> he you could name he could name any kind of plant or mushroom. Yes, there was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that house was was otherworldly wasn't it i don't oh, think, wicked i don't think you could recreate that as a set it was just this amazing um, cre credit to lewis as well managing to all of the I mean, all the locations oh all the locations are incredible i mean the, look i mean as you say you know when this all absolutely takes off through the roof i'm sure we'll be hosting tours there it'd be like it'd be more popular than platform nine and three quarters <laughs> yeah. i'd love that to be true <laughs> <laughs> just loads of people in his house we, uh, well, he's got a bar it. hasn't he absolutely he, hasn't he got like a a locals anyone can pop over and have a pint kind of thing going on without it being a formal pub because he did have a bar didn't he oh, well, really? sat waiting have to go down informal green room that was a pub wasn't it i think yeah it did have a sign on the wall actually yeah, yeah. <laughs> the crates of moonshine <laughs> oh there's definitely some of that somewhere but um yeah no i, I think uh i th i'm you know i'm i'm mega proud of it i think it's it, oh absolutely it's and it's, it's, it's well, set the, tapestry you know, really, the next the the and you know you can't can't skip over the music do you know what i mean because when we first heard it uh it was in the bus when we first heard the it opening did. tune <laughs> and like as 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 everyone else was singing it and that I, it, it, that's when it really clicked for me. I was like, okay, so this is, because you never know, as I say, when the film's been made or a TV show's been made, you've got, an, everyone's got an idea in their head, but they don't really know what it will be because you can edit mm. anything. You can, mm. you, you know, with green screen, as we talked before, you could have put, a, you could put whatever in it. Mm. But, um, uh, it, it was a real, it was a real moment for me. That, that was a real moment where I went, yeah, this is going to be, this is going to be pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, all right, and that and that continued, and then when I saw the, because the edit did change after I saw it in London, and then in Man in Manchester as well, it had a slight tweak, and I did notice, and mm. boy, yeah, the subtleties, um, within the music and within the album that you you guys have created, um, it, yeah, really complements each other. Mm. I know it was a co-promotion, co-production kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And I does they do slot in really well listening yeah. to it and watching it. And he used um, more than I yeah. more than I thought he would use as well, which I was really I was really pleased about. Um oh, I thought 
I wasn't sure how much he'd, he'd use and how much of it would just be kind of atmospheric sounds and stuff. So, I mean, I did not expect him to use my that song "Gobble Gobble" <clears throat> as the opening scene to introduce Toby to the world as a as a yeah. laboratory worker. That was that was wild. And it, it, when I first saw it, I thought, "No, you can't do that. This is a really terrifying scene. What the what the fuck are you doing?" Um, I mean, it's cool that you're using the track, and I was I was really chuffed about that. But I thought, no, no, I'm not I'm not sure at all about that. Which is a really weird feeling to have when you've created this something with someone, and they've they've kind of complimented you by using your songs, and you're like, and you kind of disagree, <laughs> yeah. disagree with it. It's like a really really weird response I, I felt I had, but I watched it because I watched it at work with all my sort of. Co co-workers and family and stuff and it was so tense in there i mean i was i was like i've got the link i've got the link everybody stop everybody stop what they're doing and we all sat around it and watched it and yeah that that particular part was like oh okay um but since it's been live and there are comments a lot of people say they liked having a really terrifying jarring scene with something quite upbeat and you know uh, yeah it's just a genius bit of editing that I had. Well, it's that your your personal connection to, or you know, when you 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 because you created that, you know, a while ago, didn't you? You created that. Yeah, prior well, to this within episode. that year, yeah, yeah, and yeah. That, that one in particular we wrote at Rockfield, um, more or less, I think at the time. So we were in there, and I got that do 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 do. So I I got that riff going on, and Chris went. Well, that's interesting. Where's that from? And I went, no, I think I think I'm onto something there. And then I wrote, um, I wrote the lyrics, which were making me laugh because they were just so daft about the idea of going to um the family Christmas dinner, which as excited as you are to see your family, there's usually some kind of undercurrent of anxiety over whatever. Because it's it's family and they haven't seen each other for a while. So I kind of wrote about that. And then it was like taking it to the extremes, really, of um, uh, what it feels like to be in that in that mix, really. Because I I think I'm fairly calm and easygoing around everybody, but I didn't realise that I actually I do kind of shit myself a little bit when it comes to Christmas time, <laughs> just uh -huh. so many personalities in a very small space having to kind of interact, and I'm I'm not that comfortable in. It. I don't think many people are, to be fair, but that's what that song was about. Um, and calling it Gobble Gobble seemed quite funny. And, and he was like, well, well, let's make this into a Christmas song then, um, which we didn't do, but we might do next year, maybe. I'm not, I'm not really sure. But And then I think we were, all, me, Nick and Chris were all on the same page of now we need to release some proper like 80s rock into there as well and really turn it up, so, up, up and oh, up. Yeah. Um, and that's Nick's wheelhouse as well. So he... Um, <laughs> he he that's his heritage is like 80s 90s rock in rockfield as well so and the irony of it is you know you talk about you being you know granddad paddy former yeah. farmer where we recorded did in is it was a former pigsty um, no way. yeah rock, the rock, rockfield's got two recording studios in it the small one the coach house is where oasis and yeah all of the you know stone roses and everybody else recorded and then the big studio the quad is where queen recorded where you needed like you might have a choir or you might have an orchestra or you've just got lots of band members and it, and the quad is in a uh, courtyard and 90 percent of that were pigsties which i didn't i didn't know until wow. much later and when i asked rockfield if they would promote my album when they un when they got wind of the what the, the 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 kind of the backbone of the project they would they just said oh we can't really support <laughs> which is really? a shame. yeah because they're not um they're not a pig farm anymore and they do keep animals but i don't think they take many to the slaughter i think they they keep them i know um kingsley ward who's the founder of it since you know the donkey's years um he's very fond on cows and likes to ride them and just loves them and stuff and doesn't i don't think he takes them to market but anyway yeah so um yeah, it's good. It's really nice to have a film and music kind of woven together. Yeah, absolutely. And to see it all come together. But, um... It fits in perfectly, is what my point, because it was, uh, even though you, 
well, even as you were saying, the connection was always there. Mm. I suppose it's just that you needed, or I'm not saying you needed it, but Brett is that outside eye, and he is because he's so mm. you know, adept at them kind of things. It, I yeah. think it fit perfectly. Really did. Really made it. So what's what's on the cards for Paddy Stafford now since you your last location shoot in Rome? Uh, <laughs> I was a gladiator too. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm banned from all air travel for the next 12 months. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I, I've got um, I've got something coming up. Um, this is, uh, some theatre stuff um, should be announced this week. Um, That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. It's a brand new play. Um Are you happier on screen or theatre? What where's your where's your heart set? Or do you like I, both? I mean I love both. I think I think in the in the theatre, they both give different things to you. Or mm. and to you know, they allow you to do different things as well. You I think for an actor, when you're in theatre, you get to do it all in sequence. Obviously you get to do the whole play. You it's 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 kind of a lot, I find it a bit easier as well because you, you, as I say, you do it and it's done and you also get a load of goes at it mm. without it. You, every night you can do it differently or, you know, you find new things as you go along and the longer the, you know, the run is, the, the kind of better in a way. Um, but obviously with screen, you it allows you to do so much more, so mm. much more. You, and I, I enjoy that. I enjoy the... The artistry within film and TV, like the close-ups of very minuscule things, because mm-hmm. um, I always get told I'm too small on stage now and again. So I think on film, it's uh, it allows you to. What does that mean? You're too small on stage. As in, like, because you have to, you know, you have to act differently on stage. You've got to do if you know if you're on stage, or you're on film, you might do that. On stage, you'd probably have to turn your whole body, or you know, right. if you're playing to a lot of people or a big, a big theatre. Um, yeah, just always thinking on your feet. But I love them both. I love them both. I really do. Um, anytime I get the chance to act, it's a good, it's a good day. Um, I think when when so, I was dropping you off, you were going, you were going to do. Uh, were you like wrestling in a in a bin bag or something? Oh, um, I, I went to do. Uh, I went, yeah, I did a, f- a film um, that was like, it was all improv. Um, right. And it was, it's kind of like the Hunger Games a bit-esque. Um, but it was really, yeah, it was really good. Really good. Um, really enjoyed it. Um, and would that be something that we can see or is it, or was it like, what was it for? It, it So it was, uh, it's, it, it's not out yet. Um, it's just a sh- it's just a short film. Um, right. It's a short film, um, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm I've seen some pictures of it. It does look very cool. Wicked. It does look very cool. Um, but yeah, a lot of a uh, a lot of fighting and a lot of shouting and stuff like that. So more just menacing things, really. My granny, funnily enough, said <laughs> you know, said spoke about it before. She said um, one thing she always says: Will you ever play someone nice? <laughs> you ever just play someone nice? <laughs> um, but in this play, I do. I do a place for my nice. Uh, so, around, uh, right, uh, prayers are answered. Um, and is there anything that you've got, like in your sights, that I'd really love to play this kind of character or in this kind of genre that that you you've got in your sights? I mean, I love. Um, yeah, I, I, I love. Um, I love classical text. I've mm. always loved classical I text. Seen that before? Yeah, I said always. But in like when I was at when I was at training and that, um, it's something I found so interesting. And there's a reason why it stuck around for so long. I think, um, because it don't get old. I think Shakespeare wrote every story it was ever probably ever written. Mm-hmm. Um, and his contemporaries are pretty cool. Um, I also love like the work of Shane Meadows. Um, if we're talking about the TV world and film and stuff and um that kind of stuff, and uh, obviously. No kiddo feature wouldn't be bad either. Mm, I know. <clears throat> I I um we haven't got to talk about that with the with the rest of the guys yet because we're still still spinning on on the releases for this one. But yeah, I I can I can see it being the. It's certainly got it's certainly got the the 
the makings of of Ella. Uh, I mean, I've watched th- three hours and ten minutes of Avatar, like on <laughs> on Saturday. I did as well. Yeah, I did as well. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do feel like you've achieved something at the end, and I didn't fall asleep as well. And I've, I fell asleep to so many things. I fell asleep to Glass Onion as well recently. Oh um, yeah, and that freaking film with Will Ferrell, the Christmas Spirited. I fell asleep to that, which I don't apparently wasn't a bad thing, but um, yeah, Christ, three hours and ten minutes though, Jesus. Um, I, I, the, one of the things that I, I find, and and I know it's pretty, you know, maybe makes me sound a little bit flippant, but I, just the originality of story just seems to be really lacking these days, and I don't know whether it's with the advent of going more stream based and less classic film based or, or what but just the originality of story just seems to be really lacking um but there doesn't seem to be as much yeah. of it that that uh, as there used to be because certainly i mean what did you think of avatar uh i mean I, I hadn't watched the first one in a long time and i think that hindered me mm. i couldn't remember what was going on mm. and Same for uh, me. i needed refreshing as well but i like i think I'm, not many directors or people get the chance to have such a budget to do something like that and I think you have to just appreciate that it's that is what it is like mm. and it you know it it was there are beautiful parts of it I love my video games and it, mm. it, it, it you know it echoed with that for me um right I didn't I did enjoy it um but yeah like if that's how long the film is, that's how long the film is. Mm. Um, I think that's a good way to it. say it's too long. James Cameron's made way more films than me. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, would, you wouldn't get out of bed either, would you, if he rang up? So, uh, <laughs> I know what you're saying, for sure. Um, but What about yourself, though? What did you think? I just I just felt, but I, rem- I kind of reminded myself of I felt the same way last time I saw the first one was, I loved the the originality at the beginning of there's all these um cryogenically frozen soldiers that are you know defrosted and then they're connected in with their avatar and the avatar is this different being and you know i think the he hadn't he hadn't walked at, you know because he'd had his legs blown off in the war so all of a sudden he was this you know eight foot yeah. blue animal in in a different world and i just thought that was that was breathtakingly original um but then by the end it would just became a good versus evil american crew cut soldier in it trying to blast yeah. they're just oh that's a shame um but, i must but, say though the wildlife in it like the creativity of the world mm. uh, it was the it was the uh, ho- hovering mountains for me was just like that's cool because I, I, yeah. I did find sometimes with with whenever um, a film, a writer, or a filmmaker has to come up with stuff that doesn't has never existed before. They they always fall short for me, um, yeah. because I mean, I, <laughs> I thought with Avatar, it was like, oh, well, we'll have a whale, but we'll give it two eyes, and one of them can be like a <laughs> eye, and that'll make it different. I was like, mm, maybe you could have pushed that a bit harder, maybe on on the animal front, but that I don't know. It's easy for me to say as a, a bloke sat in Burton on Zoom, isn't it? Um, <laughs> everyone's a critic, everyone's a critic, aren't they? But I am excited about films and what opportunities that gives storytellers to, you know, uh, j- jump into and, and to show people um, because that's why we go there. I think we, I mean, for me, certainly I, it's an, it's an escape. It's a, it's a chance to switch my brain off. Cause my, I don't know what your brain is like. Mine never, mine never stops yapping. Um, and there's usually oh, yeah. three or four conflicting, <laughs> arguing noises going on. So TV and film for me is a great, I, I can't, I do completely switch off. Um, and I think that's good, good for my brain anyway, to just, you know, cool it I, down. A bit. I think having short spurts as well. Like, I mean, you know, we've created a short film. Having it, having it being short, I mean, with the, you know, the, 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 the vice like grip that TikTok and Instagram reels and Facebook reels and things like this have on, but pretty, I'm pretty sure all of us, whether we like it or not, I say I don't use it. Makes it makes 14 minutes quite okay. long, doesn't it? Really, against everything else. Oh, uh, yeah. You um, I think having something short is 
like you say, we were going on about it's very long. It is long. But having something short like that, and but you know, series, I love series, you know, you know, TV programs and things that are quick bursts, 20 minute programs, like yeah. There are so many, there are so many vessels. Um let's just find about which one tells the story best, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um I mean it must be very exciting for you to be in that industry, really. I mean, you've obviously got a, a bright and I'm not just trying to be a secker fan, you you've got a bright future ahead of you. So it must be really exciting to be so young and you know what you're going to be doing. Uh, lot. Really. You obviously love your craft and 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 uh, 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 the affability side of it. You you obviously take your craft really seriously and you love it as well, which is which comes across. So oh, it's just always good to work with good people, isn't it? That's the main thing. I think it does yeah. help. Isn't it? So yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Yeah. It's a pleasure, and I'm I'm really grateful for your time in this interview oh, as well thank you mate i think i I'd, I'd like to think that anybody who watches the film will find this really interesting as well because it, it you do get paddy from this interview which i think is really important i think sometimes when you see you know if you'd have been plonked on the end of graham norton's sofa or whatever else <laughs> you know you, it, it would be it'd be hard to find you know the true paddy so i think we've achieved that in our own they'll sport. probably switch on this and think oh god <laughs> what, a, what a load of rubbish what an idiot what a watching that again. yeah Probably. <laughs> At least they watched it once, eh? Hey? <laughs> got that one view. That's all. Oh, yeah, we've got it now. <laughs> all right, well, um, let, let's um, let's wrap up then, bud. So, um, I can't wait to work with you again. And um, you, I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful for what you've done with the film. And, uh, yeah, let's hope it's, it's not too long before we're back on set, eh? Hey, the pleasure's all mine, Scott. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much. All right, mate. Thank you. Take care. Yeah. Cheers, mate.